today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to stop being a perfectionist. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel and of course if you're new here, welcome. My name is Erin and this channel is all about helping you to build the business and life of your dreams. Today's video is going to be all about how to stop it being a perfectionist. Now, I'm gonna be honest, perfectionism isn't something that I've experienced myself. I've always been kind of, you could say, a bull in a china shop kind of person. But I've worked with so many women all over the world who've experienced perfectionism. And I know from my own personal experience that perfectionism is just a byproduct of fear. It comes in the same as procrastination, fear of feedback and all of that. So if you did like this video, I would very much appreciate it if you gave it a big thumbs up. And of course, if you are new here, then consider subscribing. I put out new videos every Tuesday and Friday. All right, so before we get into the exercise for how you can actually overcome perfectionism, let's talk about exactly why you're experiencing it. So just like I said before, perfectionism is a byproduct of fear, particularly the fear of feedback. Most people are perfectionists. They try to make things perfect because they're scared of how other people are going to view their work or view what it is that they're outputting. Now, the thing is a lot of people think that perfectionism is a quality. They think that, well, it's just attention to detail and putting my best work out. But more often than not, what perfectionism actually does is leads to procrastination. It leads to not putting out anything whatsoever and it can lead to major setbacks in your business or life journey. So what we need to do is come up with an exercise, a practice that's going to help you first understand the perfectionism is a no-no and then for you to be able to identify it when it does happen to you and then obviously overcome that so this isn't gonna be like a tips video I have one exercise that I want you to write down and actually implement if you are struggling with perfectionism so what I have for you today is an exercise that I call the perfectionist practice. It's a few little steps that you will implement each and every single time you recognize that your perfectionism is holding you back. It's stopping you from putting things out. It's stopping you from completing work and it's stopping you from actually essentially moving forward. The first thing you need to do is make a list of your triggers. Now this is going to be a running list, something that you add to as you go along and you recognize more and more things are actually triggering your perfectionism. But I want you to, in a journal, in a book or something, write down all of the things that you think trigger your perfectionism. So frustration often triggers perfectionism. You know, maybe we're building a website, we're trying to put together a workbook and things just aren't kind of working. And then you get yourself in that spiral of where you're frustrated and then you want it to be perfect, but it's not perfect. So it gets worse. And then you, you know, so on and so forth. And that state of frustration is actually what put, brings the perfectionist in you on. Another reason is that when we're doing things that we know people who are in our personal life or maybe on our Facebook page or people who we're going to see are going to be able to view the work that we're putting out, we're scared of the judgment, we're scared of the feedback. So often we are trying to make it perfect when, you know, that's just not going to happen. So make a list of all the things that trigger your perfectionism because once you actually know and can identify when your perfectionism is going to come on, it's much easier to actually be able to manage it. So that's kind of the goal for you is to really be able to collect all of those triggers. Once you've started collecting those triggers, you actually want a practice. That's why I call it the perfectionist practice. You want a practice to be able to overcome it when you do start experiencing it. What I like to teach my clients who are experiencing perfectionism is just simply a mindfulness practice. You know, the reason why so many of us continue down the spiral of perfectionism is because we're not actually mindful to what the situation is, to what's going on, to the fact that we're scared and we're being a perfectionist as a result of that. So when you recognize that your triggers are triggering you and you're starting to experience those symptoms of perfectionism, what you actually want to do is step away, first of all. So whatever the task at hand is, step away. Now, what you want to do next is either in a journal, you can talk to yourself out loud, you can type it out, but you want to have a conversation with yourself about what's going on. I think a lot of people feel more comfortable doing this in a journal, but for me, when I'm working on my limitations, I often like to talk it out loud. So whatever you feel more comfortable doing, but you actually want to have that dialogue with yourself and ask yourself what's going on here. And what you want to do is start recognizing the brain patterns, the thoughts that are happening, which are false. Because often we catastrophize 
bias things. So let's use the example of one of your triggers being scared of getting feedback, you know, scared of the people around you judging you for your work not being good enough. What you want to do in this self dialogue is say, would these people actually judge me? Think about it. All those people on my Facebook page, are they actually going to take the time out of their day to write me a message and say, oh, your work's a little bit shitty today? Like, it just doesn't, I don't know if that color works. That line over there, like it's not perfect, you know, it's, oh, there's a spelling mistake. I mean, I know a lot of people say that to me, but you've got to think to yourself, like, are they actually going to do that? What's the reality, not what's going on up here? You need to outline for yourself what the actual reality is. And then when you can look at that objectively saying, look, no one's going to take the time out of their day to tell me that the lines on my ebook are crooked or something like this. Haters will, but that's a different story. Always separate haters from perfectionism because that's them and not you. So different story there. We can talk about that a different day. But matter of factly, the people in your life, are they actually going to take the day to tell me that, you know, the lines aren't straight and whatever the perfectionism, whatever the things you're being perfectionist about are. Once you actually can have this dialogue and you look at it objectively, then when you feel a little bit more at ease, when you feel a little bit more like, oh, okay, I'm being crazy. This is not actual reality. Then you can go back to the task at hand. Now, I wouldn't even suggest going back immediately. Give yourself a little bit of time, go for a walk, go for a run, do something that makes you happy. Have a cup of tea, have a coffee, play with your dog, call a friend, whatever makes you filled up with joy and puts you back in that peak happiness aligned state, then do that before actually going back to the task at hand. Now I know this seems like a lot of work, but what's the alternative to always feel that state of frustration, that state of perfectionism and being held back? And you'll get quicker at doing this each and every time and what you'll actually find is your perfectionism after a while will start to wear off. You won't actually have to take the time away. You can just look at something and be like, oh, come on, Aaron, I'm being perfectionist now. Let's get back to work and put this out. So just to summarize, First, you wanna start recognizing exactly what those triggers are, those situations where you feel yourself becoming a perfectionist, where you feel like your perfectionist-ism, I don't know if that's a word, comes out. And then when those triggers are happening, you wanna remove yourself from the situation and look at it matter-of-factly, look at the reality of this, are people going to judge me? Am I going to fail if I put this out with crooked lines or something like that? The final thing to recognize is that perfect doesn't exist, except in math. So if you're a mathematician, turn this video off because you should be perfect. But other than that, perfect doesn't exist. Everything is an art, everything is subjective, everything up is up to the eye of the beholder. So recognize that something that you might not think is perfect, other people might think is absolutely amazing, other people might think it's rubbish. You're never gonna please everyone, so just remember that as well. I hope this exercise was helpful for you. Please do let me know in the comments below if you do try it and if it is helpful. I did also forget to mention at the beginning of this video that there will be no vote again this week because I'm doing a really exciting collab with a few amazing ladies next week for How To Tuesday. So that's already organized, but we'll go back to the vote the week after that. So thank you so much for watching everyone. I really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video.